Okay, in this presentation, we are going to look at a Poisson gamma mixture. Now, quite often they will lead on to a negative binomial distribution question, something to do with the negative binomial distribution. But just for the time being, let's go with what we have here. For a given insured driver in a large portfolio of insured drivers, the number of collision claims in a year has a Poisson distribution with mean capital lambda. The Poisson mean capital lambda follows a gamma distribution with a mean 4 and a variance of 80. So this will help us parameterize, find out the parameters of the gamma distribution. Okay. For a randomly selected driver from this portfolio, what is the probability of having exactly two collisions claims in one in the next year? And what is the probability of having at most one claim in the year? So, the, in, to cut a long story short, this is a gamma Poisson mixture, and there, therefore it is a negative binomial distribution. So, for the given gamma mean and variance, we can determine the parameters of the gamma distribution. So, what we're going to do here is use the method of moments. Now, this is essentially using the fact that the mean is, so the gamma distribution let's just call it like that, is gamma, alpha, and theta, okay, where this is the shape parameter, alpha, and that is the scale parameter, theta. And the expected value, the mean, so to speak, is simply the multiple of alpha and theta, and the variance is alpha times theta squared. So you can very quickly deduce that the theta must equals 20 okay so just divide the variance by the mean and that will give you theta and that therefore that would mean by the process of elimination that alpha equals 0 0.2 so this leads on to the probability mass function of the negative binomial distribution so the sorry let's just say probability mass function actually i should say mass it's a little typo because what we're dealing with is a discrete distribution Anyway, the probability mass function of binomial distribution is given as follows. So we're going to use this expression here. But we, well, we might use that expression there. Just be careful because there's multiple ways of expressing the negative binomial. Where R is the number of successes. Now, this is, this is just the typical expression of the gamma distribution here. K is the number of failures and P is the number of, uh, is the probability of success. Okay. So that's just the negative binomial 101 there, okay? Now, but when we use the gamma distribution, or the gamma Poisson gamma mixture, we just have to, have to sort of restate a couple of things, okay? So what we could do here is, uh, what we do here is we let R alpha, that is becomes R, and the probability here is... 1 over 1 plus theta, okay? Okay, because what happens is 1 minus p equals theta divided by 1 minus theta. p is this, okay? 1 over 1 plus theta. 1 minus p is 1 minus the probability of success is theta divided by 1 plus theta. Uh, when you're dealing with the negative binomial distribution, pay close attention to what has the value alpha which is the shape parameter or in the case of the negative binomial r and what is has the power of k which is the probability you're looking for just make sure it matches up with this up here okay so that's 1 minus p to the power of k times p to the power of r where r is the negative binomial parameter Anyway, okay, so I'm digressing here. So we're going to use this expression here. Now, just be careful with the negative binomial because it's a bit, little bit, there's multiple ways of expressing it. When we put in our values here, this is what we get. Okay, uh, theta is 20. So 1 over 1 plus theta is 1 over 21. The, uh, alpha is 0 0.2. Okay, so this is going to stay fairly consistent the whole way through. Theta divided by 1 plus theta is 20 divided by 21. Here we have the power of k, and over here we have the choose the binomial coefficient of k minus 0 0.8, choose k, okay? 
before we start, let's just actually look at how to calculate this because it informs us how to calculate this and also what to do when k is equal to zero and how to calculate this. Well, actually, I just actually when k is zero, that goes to one, okay? But let's just look at this one here. I'm going to just do a sort of similar sort of example, just based on something that would be like this. It's not part of this ca calculation here. Let's go 3.2. Uh, I'll just make it simple, 2, okay? So what we do is, first off, evaluate this as a factorial. So that's 2 times 1. So there's two numbers there, two integers, so to speak. And there's a sort of countdown, so 2 to 1, okay, uh, where we go where this number here is 1 less than the number before it, and so on. And what we're going to do is something similar here, just to pair it. So 3.2 is the what we're choosing from. So we just subtract 1, 2.2, okay. Now this corresponds to as far as we can go down here, 1. So we've ended the countdown above and below. So we just evaluate that to get our binomial coefficient. It sort of works the exact same way as you would go about calculating a binomial coefficient. Uh, let's just go 1, choose 2, which is what we will need here very shortly. So we'll start again, 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Do a countdown until we get to the highest number before zero, which is 0 0.2. Uh, so we start off with 1.2 and just do countdown until we get to the end of the positive numbers. Okay, that's how we do it. So uh, when, when we have k is equal to zero, essentially we just let the whole thing equal to one. So in this instance, that uh, goes to one. The binomial coefficient goes to 1 when k is equal to 0. That will also go to 1 when k is equal to 0. So we're left with this. Probability of x equal to 0 is 1 over 21 to the power of 0 0.2. And that is 0 0.5439. When we calculate it for probability of x equal to 1, that is from 0 0.2 choose 1. Or the binomial coefficient of 0 0.2 and 1. Okay, which is something we actually can calculate. It just works out to be 0 0.2. Uh, we have 1 over 21 to the power of 0 0.2, which stays consistent the whole way through. In fact, we're going to use it down here as well. And then we have 20 over 21 with to the power of 1, let's say. So 0 0.2 times 1 over 21 to the power of 0 0.2 times 20 divided by 21. That gives us the probability of x equal to 1 equals 0 0.1036. So let's just save all these up. That one there, that one there. And likewise, for the probability of x equal to 2, from 1.2, choose 2, times 1 over 21 to the power of 0 0.2, times 20 divided by 21 to the power of 2. That's our binomial coefficient there, 1.2 times 0 0.2 over 2. Well, you can go 2 times 1 if you want. Uh, 1 over 21 to the power of 0 0.2, and 10 over 21 to the power of 2. Okay, we can ignore that. Bit of calculator work, that's just a typo. That bit of calculator work, that is 0 0.0592. So the answer to the first question is, what is the probability of x equal to 2, that there's two claims? Well, it's 5.92%, or 0 0.0592. Okay, so we've done all the calculations there. We don't really need to go through them anymore, but essentially we're using these numbers here. That one there, that one there, and that one there. Those are the numbers we are using. Okay. Uh, the second question is, what is the probability of x equal to 1? That is the probability of x equal to 0 plus the probability of x equal to 1. So essentially, just add those two numbers together. We get 0 0.6475. So there's a close to 65% chance that the insured driver has at most one claim in a year. Okay, we'll leave it there.